Hello everybody, that's here. Welcome to episode 3 of Green Lantern Build. I work on it for a few days last week, a few days this week, and I'd like to give you this interim update. So far what I did, I assembled system fully in air-cooled type of setup. I installed some software, updated windows, antivirus, a lot of other things that needs to be done in order to just computer to be used. And also wanted to make sure that hardware absolutely working. So I don't get into the trouble as like I did in my last computer build when I didn't test one single computer component a razor cable and it's almost giving me a heart attack when I try to power up the system. First of all a couple of things that I learned more about this case left case itself. I was under the impression when I packed the first time, I saw the first time in my life, that in order to put power supply you actually need to completely assemble bottom of the case so do a little bit more work than it is in real life. Basically it's very simple, the motherboard tray just sits on the four screws and you can take it off very easily and then you have access to the bottom chamber so you don't need to unscrew a bunch of other little screws on the bottom. So in order to work with computer you need to obviously to remove the top cover that there's no choice here. There's a bunch of screws you need to remove in order to deal with this and uh, that you have to remove. But after that all you need to do is just remove four screws from the motherboard tray and then you get access to the lower chamber and then you can install power supply very easily and things like this. Also I didn't uh, mention it maybe clearly enough but this uh, the bottom panel here that get you access to hard drives or whatever other components you put in because usually you don't really need to remove power supply unless it's really failed but sometimes you might want to add additional hard drive so computer case design was actually more thought than I, I catch it when I just open the box another thing that I noticed that the uh, one dual switch that comes with this power supply I actually don't have anything connected but it's only light up for computer getting on itself. It doesn't have a cable or any feedback on your hard drive activity. So if you're looking for something like this, you actually need to either change one dual switch here or you can do something else. What I did, you might see this little uh, green light flashing from time to time right here. So what I did, I just took a dark side three millimeter LED and I just plugged it into motherboard. It only gives you five volts and not 12, so it's not as bright as it could be, but it clearly indicates when some SSD or hard drive activity is present. And so that's uh, the little modification that I did. So I'm not looking for replacing one dual switch. I will be just using this LED as indicator. Another thing that I would like to touch today because we actually will be losing some of the functionality here because of uh, system needs to be water cool, it's all this ambient light business. Two components has a RGB light here, both from Gigabyte of course. Motherboard, I mentioned that we have a bunch of LEDs on the other side of the system and it looked like it was a lot of LEDs and as a result it produced really bright light. But even with all this multiple bulbs shining on me you can see the green glow is very very visible when you have a normal environment with a normal light it's absolutely amazing even in, despite the fact that the case itself is a black which is not the best way to reflect lights you can see the green glow absolutely looking perfectly fine and i really like it second part is gigabyte 1080 it has an additional couple LEDs, one for the fan status and another one for the logo itself. One thing that I didn't realize, first I thought everything, because it's coming from one company, right? So first I, I was thinking that everything will be synchronized automatically on the practice. So far there is no integration between graphical card and motherboard. It promised to be added maybe on a later date. But right now if you want to have a colors, set and the way how the blink or whatever other business you're interested in you do it separately from for gpu and you have it absolutely separately for the motherboard not big deal but i would expect it to be as a one single solution and you need a separate set of software to do so for motherboard there's a two ways how you can do it one way you set up everything in a, a bios it's a little bit couple more options there we'll look at it in a second or you run 
gigabyte utility which has a bunch of other stuff that you can use to control your motherboard or, or entire system and uh, you set up it here all right guys let's look uh, how things work so we can see lights on gpu this is lights from motherboard itself and first the software suite that works for graphical cards only so if you can see we can change brightness which is uh, totally useless in my opinion because uh, it's really not bright at all so i would expect that most of users will be probably will go for the maximum brightness at all times uh, this is a little slider that you can change the color so you go blue or pink or whatever red you can see it right there right and um oops so i try to match it uh, the same color as i have with the uh, motherboard itself and the color of the paint of the case so it's kind of salad green the only other useful things i found that we can do all this breathing color and uh, flashing color or dull flashing color i think it's quite annoying type of things i i don't know why people want to use that but uh, wearable brightness yeah it's kind of another version of breathing color but audio flashing what was something that i was kind of excited so here's some Billy Idol music that I have here on YouTube. So you can see it's blinking, but the tune up not the best, I think, because I would expect it flashing a little bit more prominent. So it's kind of flashing, but you can't even say if it's flashing with music or not. So let me bring my speaker a little bit closer. Here you go. All right. So that's about it. For the motherboard itself, there's a two ways to do so. One, you can set up everything in the BIOS and uh, you don't need to even to uh, use an app center if you don't want to install any of gigabyte um, additional utilities because some people see value in one, some of those and other people just uh, perceive such things as a bloatware and I equally respect both situations. So if you don't want to install Gigabyte App Center, you can do it from the BIOS. But if you do, here's a, one part of this application right here. So ambient light, LED, this is the software that actually controls the whole thing. It's a little bit buggy as I found because uh, if when I launch it, just look, you see, well, now it's actually worked this time around, but uh, sometimes the window opens under the application center window, which is a total software bug. But this time, maybe because I already launched it before I start making this video, it's actually start working properly this time around. But anyway, so this is a little application that you launch and you can change the standard LED settings that you probably can find of most of uh, any other motherboard that are available in the market right now. So you can have a still mode that just light is on constantly, some pulse mode when it goes in and out, and a beat mode when you can start some music on YouTube video and will blinking with audio signal you're playing. I would say that beats mode is pretty weak you don't even know if it's random blinking or it's actually blinking with music. That's how bad it is. So I wouldn't recommend to use beat mode at all. But if you want the pulse mode, especially if, for example, we switch from fixed color to outer color and we put in a, in a pulse mode. So you go through entire RGB color scheme, like all these colors changing. So it, it's kind of cute. Or if you don't want to bother with any sort of blinking, then you can can go still mode and it will be fixed, All right? So right now it gets stuck in the color that we, we're actually going through the pulsating. But uh, if we go to default, default, hold on, still, outer, default, and, and custom. Yeah, now, so you see the software as I said, it's kind of buggy because sometimes it doesn't show color, so you need to click around to get what you want. But uh, overall, you can set it up and it works. Last thing that you can do for the color scheme itself, if you do custom right there, so you bring this color wheel and you can kind of, you can see here, right? So I move to blue or purple, so, and it's, uh, you say okay, and it's applied. 
it's not always exactly the color that you see on the screen and goes here so it's better if you actually moving the cursor to where you hope the things are but you actually need to look with your eyes and verify the color that's how i did it i'm not i'm not setting here i actually setting by looking here while blindly moving cursor and trying to get the right sh shade of green that match for my eyes at least it's matching the color of the case to the maximum so it's kind of it should be a little bit yellowish kind of uh, here you go for me right now it's very very close and again if you connect external light with provided cable so we have a cable and we have external light connected so we have uh, the same color of the light as a uh, underglow on the motherboard it's just so bright so it's kind of a little bit problem here and if you dim it which you can do right here on by the color wheel so you can dim it make it less bright then underglow goes down really well, much as well so it's a little bit of disbalance as I see it but other than that seems everything works so I maximize it remove for external light for now you can connect any standard light as long as you have a proper cable or proper adapter I will make a bunch of adapters that works with dark side LEDs light so that will be available in the store at some point but realistically there are no special limitations that you need some special light it's just a standard RGB light all you need to do is match all the color cables combination properly and make a correct connector all right guys that's pretty much it uh, you can see that if you want to and if you're really into some glow business for your computer you can create very neat effects with this motherboard and matching gigabyte gpu also i believe that even if you put something else that had the rgb functions it probably will be a similar result but it's it's kind of cool i like it if you you always can switch it off if you don't like lights but if you do it's nice and nice have this feature and I personally usually prefer some sort of uh, lighting effects going on in, in my builds because it's add to the character of the computer now I, I have a free pass start tearing out like a GPU heat sink so I can put GPU blocks and things like this and um, now we have a little bit more fun with actual water cooling portion of the series thank you very much for watching and um, i appreciate everybody who considered to look at our patreon page we will have some exclusive items for guys who decide to support us as a special videos which are not released and only visible for patreon people and uh, some perks that i will try to put and see if people will like this so that's it for now thank you again and see you soon